In this video, we will practice some College Board multiple choice questions about change in linear and exponential functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.2. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. Number 1. For arithmetic sequence Sn, S3 equals 3 and S6 equals 24, what is the value of S10 minus S8? We have learned that an arithmetic sequence can be modeled by Sn equals Sk plus D times N minus K, where Sn is the nth term of the sequence, Sk is term K, and D is the common difference. When you are given two terms of the sequence, that's enough to write the equation. First you have to find the common difference D by plugging in S6 for Sn and S3 for Sk. The n minus k is 6 minus 3, so that's 3. Sk is 24, and S3 is 3, and then D3 I will write as 3D. Let's subtract 3 from both sides, so we have 21 is equal to 3D. Then if we divide both sides by 3, we get D is equal to 7. Now that we know the common difference, we can write the equation. Sn is equal to Sk, which is S3, plus D, which is 7, times N minus K, in this case N minus 3. Remember that S3 is 3, so now we have an equation for the sequence. We can use this equation to find S10 minus S8. S10 will equal 3 plus 7 times 10 minus 3, which turns out to be 52. This problem is calculator active, so use the calculator as needed. S8 will be 3 plus 7 times 8 minus 3. This is 38, so S10 minus S8 will be 52 minus 38, which is 14. So the answer is C. By the way, here's a shortcut we could have used. Once we found that the common difference is 7, we could notice that term 10 is two terms away from term 8. So the common difference will be applied twice, which gives us 14. Number two, when a certain car is initially purchased, its value is $20,000. If a car loses 9% of its value each year, when will the car's value be $10,000? The value of this car over time can be modeled by an exponential decay function. An exponential growth or decay function can be modeled by f of t equals a0 times r to the t power, where a0 is the initial amount or the initial value, and r is the growth factor. In this case, a0 is the initial value of 20,000. Since the car loses 9% of its value each year, you can find the growth factor by subtracting 100% minus 9%. That's 91%, or 0 0.91 as a decimal. If this were something that was appreciating or increasing by 9% each year, we would do 100% plus 9%. Uh, that would be, of course, 109%, or as a decimal, 1.09. And that would be the growth factor. Putting it all together, the value of the car after t years can be modeled by 20,000 times 0 0.91 to the t power. The question is, when will the car's value be $10,000? This problem is calculator active, so we can use the calculator to find where f of t will equal 10,000. First, reset your calculator by hitting second plus 712. That's second plus 712. That gives you a fresh calculator. Now hit the Y equals button and type in F of T as Y1. 
Here's f of t. To find where f of t is equal to 10,000, put 10,000 on y2. And we will graph both equations and see where they intersect. First, we need to adjust the window. Uh, x max can be 0. This is our time. And uh, so we can just start from time 0. We don't know how long it will take for the value of the car to reach 10,000. I'm going to leave x max at 10 for now. The y min and y max represent the value of the car. We can set y min as 0. Let's set y max as 20,000 because we know that's the maximum value of the car, the initial value, and the value decreases or depreciates from there. Let's hit graph and see what we've got. So we just need to find this intersection point. Hit second trace and choose option five for intersect. Move the pointer close to the point of intersection and hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. And there it is, 7.3496. The college board will accept three decimal places, but students often will lose a point for rounding incorrectly. So I recommend always using four decimal places and never trying to round. So t equals 7.3496 years is between seven years and eight years. So the answer is D. Number three, a family needs to buy one shovel and between one and eight plants inclusive for their new garden. Between 1 and 8 inclusive means including 1 and 8 as possible answers. The cost of the shovel is S dollars and the cost of one plant is P dollars. The output values of which of the following give the possible costs for these items in dollars. Note, assume any taxes are included in the costs. First we need to decide if we should use functions like A and B or sequences like C and D. In general, functions like A and B are continuous, while sequences like C and D are discrete values, individual points. The input variable x or n is going to have to represent the number of plants that we end up buying. And uh, you can't buy fractions of a plant. It's either going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8, nothing in between. So a discrete model of the kind that would be represented by a sequence would be best. Now we just need to decide if this will be an arithmetic sequence or a geometric sequence. Well, if we only buy one plant, then the cost will be the cost of one shovel plus one plant. If we buy two plants, then the cost will be one shovel plus two plants. For three plants, it's the cost of one shovel plus three plants. If we buy n plants, the cost Cn will be S plus Np. And that's what we see right here. So the answer is C. Number four, which of the following includes the input-output pairs 2, 4, and 3, 8? Let's evaluate option A at 2 and see if we get 4. So A n would be A 2 and that will equal 4 times 2 which would be 8 not 4. So A is not the answer. Now let's evaluate option B at 2 and see if we get 4. So this will become F at 2 which would equal 2 plus 4 times 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so this is really just 4, and 2 plus 4 is 6, not 4, so the answer is not B. Let's evaluate option C at 2 and see if we get 4. So we will have G2 is equal to 2 to the 2 minus 1 power but that's going to be 2 to the 1 power, which is 2. This is not 4, so C is not the answer. 
so I'm really hoping the answer is going to be D. Let's evaluate option D at 2 and see if we get 4. So we will have H at 2, and that will equal 2 times 2 to the 2 minus 1 power. But this is really 2 times 2 to the 1 power, which does equal 4. At this point, we already know that D is the answer. But let's follow through and evaluate at 3 and see if we get 8. So let's check H at 3. This will equal 2 times 2 to the 3 minus 1 power, which will be 2 times 2 to the second power, which is 2 times 4, which is 8. Number 5. An exponential function g has a known common ratio of 1 half and includes the input-output pair 1 comma 4. Which of the following could define g of x? We have learned that an exponential function can be modeled by g of x equals g of k times r to the x minus k power, where g of k is a known value of the function and r is the common ratio. The input-output pair 1 comma 4 means that g at 1 equals 4, and we are given the common ratio of 1 half. So that means we can write an equation g of x is equal to g at 1 times 1 half to the x minus 1 power. 1 is the k. But then we have g of x is equal to g at 1 is 4, so we can say 4 times 1 half to the x minus 1 power. So the answer is D. Number 6. The second term of a sequence is 6. The fourth term is 24. Of the following, which statement is true? We have been given the input-output pairs 2 comma 6 and 4 comma 24. Let's check option A. If the sequence is geometric, it can be modeled by the equation gn equals gk times r to the n minus k power, where gn is the nth term of the sequence and gk is term k, and r is the common ratio. In this format, the input-output pair 2, 6 becomes g2 equals 6, and the pair 4, 24 becomes g4 equals 24. We can substitute these in for gn and gk in order to find the common ratio r. Putting the higher index term in the front, we have g4 equals g2 times r to the 4 minus 2 power. We have 24 equals 6 times r to the second power. Dividing both sides by 6, we get 4 is equal to r squared. Taking the square root of both sides gives us r is equal to 2. This gives us the geometric model gn is equal to g2 times 2 to the n minus 2 power. But of course g2 is equal to 6, so I'm just going to make that change. Now let's see if g1 is going to equal 1. g1 would equal 6 times 2 to the 1 minus 2 power. So g1 would equal 6 times 2 to the negative 1 power. 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 half. So g1 would equal 6 times 1 half, which equals 3, not 1. So a is not the answer. While we are in geometric mode, let's go ahead and check option c. The only part that will change is the part at the end. Let's see if the fifth term could be 48. So that would mean that g5 would equal 6 times 2 to the 5 minus 2 power. Therefore, g5 would equal 6 times 2 to the third power. 2 to the third power is 8, and 6 times 8 is 48. So the answer is C. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.